The rosary pea is the deadliest plant on the planet. It grows wild in the state of Florida, it grows in the woods, and it grows in urban. The entire plant is toxic, uh, but the most uh, fatal part of the plant is actually the seeds that look like red hots. If you ingest a seed whole, the chances on living are 50-50. Uh, your body will generally pass it because the shell that's on the outside of the seed is very hard and it can't be digested. But if you chew the seed, one microgram of the meat that is inside the seed is fatal. You can ingest it, you will die. If you get the meat on your hands, nobody knows. It can be dried into a powder, it can be inhaled, you can get it in your eyes. It will kill you. The toxin that is in it is called Arbin. Like I said, there is no antidote. It takes three to five days for you to pass. Um, the symptoms include extreme diarrhea, uh, bloody stool, um, and other things. Seek help immediately. And that is our number one. Just pulled into Dunkin' Donuts, as you can see, and directly in front of my truck is Rosary Pea. And ironically, the Rosary Pea is intertwined with Smilex, which is edible, <laughs> and right next to it is a cabbage palm, which is also edible. Let me take and give you guys a closer look at the Rosary Pea. Wild on the vine. In the green machine, the green machine. So this is the rosary pea. Deadliest plant on the planet. There is no antidote. One microgram and you are done. These are the leaves of the rosary pea vine. And it's growing all the way along this fence. And mixed into this, as you can see, is Smilex. There's some more Smilex which is edible, the shoots. There are the shoots that are edible. I don't know if I'm getting this right, because I think I've got the camera right. But this is the rosary pea. Looks like a red hot with a black dot. Deadliest substance on the planet. Hopefully you learned something about that one. Number two on the list is the castor bean plant. Also grows wild in the state of Florida and like the Rose Repeat, the state of Florida has uh, an initiative to eradicate the castor plant that grows wild. It, it is a broad leaf plant. Uh, the toxin that is in the castor plant is called racin uh, and it is located actually in the shell of the bean itself. The flesh of the bean is actually used and processed to make medicinal uh, products such as castor oil, which is a laxative. Um, me personally, no. Back in the old days when um, castor oil was not properly processed and uh, remnants of the shell was uh, not properly removed, uh, castor oil was actually deadly. Uh, again, like the rosary pea, the castor bean does not have an antidote to it. Uh, and it'll ruin your day. I don't know too much more about this plant other than that it does grow wild. It's all over the state of Florida. You can find it in the woods. You can find it in urban Florida. Um, and it's readily available. And this is the castor plant from the castor bean. Give you an idea how big these leaves are. This is my hand. This is the second most deadliest plant on the planet. And these are the beans right here. When denatured, they make castor oil, which is supposed to be a laxative. I won't chance it. But that is a castor. This grows wild throughout the state of Florida. And you see how much of it there is. Number three on our list is the wonderful spotted water hemlock. Hemlock poisoning. 
Uh, the toxin that is in uh, a hemlock is called kynhindrin, which is uh, an alkaloid that attacks the central nervous system. Um, and again, there's no antidote for it. And again, it grows wild and is readily available throughout the state of Florida. Uh, just a small amount of ingestion uh, can be fatal, uh, but there, I believe there is a treatment for the symptoms from poisoning from. The first ones we're gonna talk about are going to be poison ivy poison oak, and poison sumac. They are an allergens uh, and a highly irritant sap. The sap itself is what you have to watch out for. It's very sticky and it's a resin. Um, the treatment for it, the best to do is to uh, wash for at least 30, 30 minutes, wash the effective area with soap and water, um, but like I said, it's a resin. Uh, what I have personally found that works very well for it, believe it or not, is WD-40. Uh, it is not a cure-all, but it does work well. Poison ivy can stick to the fur of your animals, your dogs, then you pet your dog and then you have it on you. You can spread it all over yourself and you get it on your hands. It's best just to stay away from it. Uh, but these are the identifying factors of each. First is our common poison ivy. Um, if you can look at the pictures, they're distinguished by three leaves. Uh, notice the shape and they're quite veiny. Uh, they can even uh, change colors and uh, you sometimes they grow really close to the ground, sometimes they climb trees. The best way to identify it is by its three leaves. If it has three leaves, leave it alone. Looks very similar to poison oak. And this right here is poison ivy. Another thing that'll ruin your day. Me personally, I'm not allergic to it, but a lot of people are. This is more poison ivy growing on a wild azalea tree. Poison oak. Poison oak has different shapes in the leaves, but they all basically uh, have the three leaf vine uh, like poison ivy. Only the leaves have a similar shape to that of oak leaves, and that's the reason why they call it poison oak. Uh, poison oak and the younger shoots can also have a reddish tint to them. Poison sumacs. Poison sumac, as you can see, has a very distinguishable leaf uh, pattern. Um, and let's go to treatments uh, for the sumac, the ivy, and the oak. Uh, a lot of times you will receive uh, blisters along with extreme itching. It'll be hard, but do not pop the blister, scratch those blisters. Uh, that will make things worse. Uh, topical uh, ointments such as calamine can help. Uh, your, it can naturally go away when, when, within one or two weeks. Uh, but like I said, I find that WD-40 removes the resin pretty well pretty well you take the resin off of you it's six of your skin you take it off of you and it you won't have any harmful effects one thing's for sure you got to make sure that you wash your clothing that you're wearing with uh any kind of ivy poison oak or sumac contamination And again, I thank you all for watching this video, and I hope you hit the like and subscribe. I hope you found it very informational. Um, be safe out there in the woods. Till next time, we'll see you. Thank you for watching, and please hit the like, the subscribe, and the notifications bell. And we will see you next time.